still Dave, it's still 1UP Gaming, still episode 366 of the 1UP Gaming Podcast. So we're going to go through this week's news, and I guess first place to start would be Starfield top sales charts even before launch as fans pay to play early. Starfield is currently performing very well for a game that isn't officially out yet, topping the Xbox sales charts and drawing in thousands of users on Steam. As reported by VG247, Game Pass members are currently flocking to the Xbox store to hand over an extra 31.49 simply to play Starfield a few days early. Idiots. The premium edition upgrade which comes with extra bits but is headlined by the chance to play ahead of the September 6th is currently the best selling item across the US and UK macro stores. Idiots. The early access tactic administered by Microsoft is a neat way of gaining back some sales revenue lost by putting Starfield and other exclusives on Game Pass Day 1, seemingly letting the company have its cake and eat it. Steam users are also getting involved even though the only opportunity to play early is to buy the full premium edition at $100. According to data on Steam DB, I don't know what Steam DB is, Steam Database maybe? Starfield hit a concurrent peak of over 245,000 players with the daily peak rising between September the 1st and 3rd, despite the package slowly growing less valuable. Um, Starfield sales aren't, only, uh, uh, aren't the only surprise from its early access period though, as again, even though it's not officially launched, someone has already completed the game in less than 3 hours. Yeah. What do you guys think? Are you stupid enough to pay $40, £35 just to play the game four or five days early? Because I couldn't care. I've got the the actual Xbox Game Pass. I will give it a go tomorrow, maybe. Maybe not even tomorrow. I might even wait till the weekend. I don't know. I'm not that bothered. It's a game. It'll be there. I don't care about spoilers. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'll just give it a go and see how it goes because I've never been a massive fan of Bethesda role playing games I quite enjoyed the Elder Scrolls 3 I think it was back in the day and I've never been a big fan of like Oblivion or Skyrim or Fallout 3, Fallout 4 I've never really got into them games so I'll give it a go but I'm not expecting massive amounts of success for myself with this game what do you guys think? Do you all agree with me that you're all idiots for paying the extra money just for a couple of days? Please leave comments and tell me why I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> I don't know. It is just a weird series of events why you'd pay 30, 40 quid just for that extra benefit of a couple of days. Uh, I just don't see it, I really don't see it, and I, I apologise if I'm annoying anyone. Next up, Witcher TTRPG going on, disappointing hiatus during the Witcher 4 development. I don't know what the tabletop RPG is, has been placed on a disappointing hiatus while, I'm sorry, Mech Witcher 4, Me Mech Witcher 4, do not do a stupid tabletop RPG, just Mech the Witcher 4. Uh, tabletop developer Artolsorian Games announced the hiatus in August but has now told IGN it doesn't know when it will continue to work on the game. We're doing alright here over here at Tolus the Talsorian. Though the news is disappointing to say the least. We don't have a time frame yet as many things are still up in the air with C D Project Red. I don't understand why they're. I don't understand why they can't release the tabletop game because like they're not making the proper game. I just don't understand it. I think there might be more to it than the fact that oh they want Witcher Four to come out first. I just don't believe that. Uh, so th the story would take place between The Witcher Two: Assassin of the Kings and The Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt. Isn't directly related to the uh, Polaris. But Talsorian and CD Projekt Red work closely together to ensure its Witcher canon remains consistent. New content we have planned isn't directly related to Witcher 4, but it touches on a lot of parts and the lore of the Witcher that are integral to the entire canon. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm not buying all this, to be fair. Um, what do you guys think? Please leave comments. Let us know what you guys think. Um, we'll talk. We'll chat. We'll get into a discussion. And we'll see what's going on. Because I just don't believe what they've said about that. Um, am, I, am I being too naive? or and, and they're just telling the truth? Or... Have they just said something to try and make their game like... Ugh. Anyway. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is back with a new developer and a new, re and a new release window. Uh, the developer behind Everybody's Gone to the Rapture and Amnesia a Machine for Pigs is now in charge. Paradox Interactive has announced that Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is back in development with Everybody's blah, 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 Chinese Room. The news was announced at PAX West and it was also confirmed Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 will be getting a gameplay reveal in January 2024 and a release date Fall 2024. Bloodlines 2 is a sequel to the original game from 2004 and Paradox provided a description of the game to tease the bloody adventure that lies ahead. Bloodlines 2 takes play players to the dark underbelly of Seattle where vampire struggles for survival and supremacy. As an elder vampire, plays meet compelling characters, manoeuvre complex political relationships, stalk the city streets for prey, and engage in intense combat while balancing the need for blood. Throughout the game, players must always be mindful of their surroundings or risk breaking the masquerade. Uh, the absolute law of secrecy that keeps vampire society hidden from humanity. Um, I don't know. I didn't like the original Masquerade Bloodlines game. I played it, I think I had it on the Boost Ride, so I streamed it and played a bit of it. And for me, it just wasn't fun. I just didn't like it. I don't know if it was just because it's maybe too old now to get into, because it is really, really old. But anyway, <clears throat> next up Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary has been rated by the ESRB. And Beyond Good and Evil might be coming to modern platforms soon as ratings has been re listed for the 20th anniversary of the game. As reported by uh, Jamatsu, the Electronic Software Rating Board has rated Beyond Good and Evil 20th anniversary edition for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PC. The ESRB's summary of the game calls it an action-adventure game where players assume the role of a reporter who is accompanied like a pig-like companion. On the planet of Hillies, the two investigate a conspiracy by exploring fancy locations, taking photos of evidence, solving puzzles and fighting enemies. Ubisoft has not announced Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition officially, so what be the release isn't guaranteed though, it's perhaps likely. The original was released in 2003 for PC, PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube and the original Xbox. It was then ported to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2011. I've actually got the 360 version. A second game, Beyond Good and Evil 2, was officially announced all the way back in 2017. Has it only been from 2017? I thought it was much earlier than that. And has been in development ever since. It's unclear when or if this game will see the light of day as updates from Ubisoft has been non-existent. It is reportedly still in production pre-production even after more than six years of development. Um, I mean, I know that they showed get gameplay, developer gameplay footage of it. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Um, I'm not... I mean, I'm one of these people that I'll play a game when it's out. I'm not going to sit there and just cross my fingers and hope that everything goes because I'm just going to be like, yeah, that'll be fine when it comes out. So next up, Saints Row developer Volition shut down by Embracer Group. Uh, Volition Games has announced that its parent company Embracer Group is shutting down the, shutting the studio down. The studio was the developer behind the latest Saints Row reboot. In an update on LinkedIn, the Volition said the past this past June, Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video game industry. As part of that program, they evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close violation, volition, God damn, effective immediately. The statement continued, To help our team, we are working to provide job assistance and help smooth the transition 
from our Volition family members. We thank our customers and fans around the world for all the love and support over the years. You'll always be in our hearts. Um, I think they did Red, Red Faction, yeah, did Red Faction, Free Space, Descent. Oh, the Descent, that was a quality game back in the day. Uh, they got acquired by Kosh Media in 2012, reboot of the Saints Row, which had mixed reviews. I quite enjoyed it, I quite liked it. It didn't look great, we played alright. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think? So I do know when people are like, oh, don't get bought by Microsoft, don't get bought by EA, they shut you down after a few days. Um, it looks like everywhere does it. You get a chance if you don't do well. They'll just close you straight down because it's like, why would they fund your studio if you've just made a crap game and they don't think that they could make money back. Um, so next up, SAG AFTRA is looking to get authorization for a second strike against video game companies. Uh, while SAG AFTRA and its actors already have one strike underway against the Alliance of Motion Pictures and Television Producers, it is now seeking a second strike that would go against major video game companies for how they treat their performers. As reported by Variety, um, they've said that the negotiations toward a new video game contract has reached a stalemate and that a strike would be the next best step to win wage increases and protection from artificial intelligence. Uh, their current contract like companies like Activision, Electronic Arts, Insomniac, Epic, Warner Brothers and more is set to expire on November 7th, 2022. Isn't it 2023 now? But the two parties agreed to extend, extend the talks another year. Uh, as of this writing, the talks between the two were, will resume on September 26th. Um, SAG are looking for an 11% retrospective increase in rates of video game performers followed by increase of four percent and four and increases of four percent and four percent. This is in line with the with the asks as given the um, the also includes the previously mentioned perform protections from AI, which the union says threatens both voice and performance capture artists. Furthermore, SAG wants rest period safety protections on set mec medic and a. Uh, Prohibition against stunts during self-taped auditions. I have no idea what any of this is all going on about. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Standing up for your fellow colleagues is good. Standing up for people's wages, people's rights is good. Um, it's just weird how it's all happening now. Do you know what I mean? It's all happening at the same time. Let us know what you guys think. You know, is it gonna make games cost a little bit more, or is it just the thing that we have to do? So, tributes paid to Smash Mouth singer Steve Harwell, who has died at age 56. Smash Mouth singer Steve Harwell died at 56, prompting grief and tributes from the entertainment world. A post on X from the official Smash Mouth account called Harwell a true origin American original. A larger than life character who shot up into the sky like a Roman candle. Steve will be remembered for his unwavering focus and impassioned determination to reach the heights of pop stardom. Rest in peace knowing you aimed for the stars and magically hit your target. So it says that he, he passed away surrounded by family and friends at his home. Um, it was revealed how well, how well had entered a hospice following a battle with alcohol abuse. Harwell retired from music in 2021 after being diagnosed with a neurological problems as well as alcoholism. Rock band Smash Mouth is perhaps best known for their song All Star, which was featured in the 2001 hit movie Shrek, it appeared in a number of TV shows and films over the years including Kim Possible, Rat Race and The Surreal Life. I, I, I know Rat Race, um, but yeah, it's sad news when someone sort of like dies and it's uh, unfortunately but that's life isn't it death is a part of life um we at one up gaming wish to offer our condolences and just positive positivity towards the family and friends and yeah you know it's just amazing 
Anyway, <clears throat> that's the news for this week. <laughs>